Trumpland is an okay name for a country, but what about if we call it Trumpland instead? Huh? Hmm? Here's one for you. Donald Trump wants to buy Greenland. Now that is not a sentence from an Onion article, although honestly you could be forgiven if you initially made that mistake. This president, the most unorthodox resident of the White House in modern history, is actually apparently interested in buying Greenland, the world's largest island that is currently owned by another country, Denmark. Denmark essentially owns it. We're very good allies with Denmark. We protect Denmark like we protect large portions of the world. So the concept came up and I said, certainly I'd be strategically, it's interesting. And we'd be interested, but we'll talk to them a little bit. Like, what? Why would Trump want Greenland? Is it even for sale? And is Greenland the one with the ice? Or is that the one that is green? These are all good questions. And as my teachers always reminded me, there are no stupid questions, ish. So allow me to answer some of the biggies. Question number one, why the heck would the US want to purchase Greenland? Okay, let's start with this. Reminder, Greenland is an island in the Arctic, which is 80% covered by an ice shelf. Less than 60,000 people actually live there. So the most obvious reason to buy Greenland is that Greenland is widely believed to be hugely rich in natural resources, including iron ore, lead, zinc, diamonds, gold, rare earth elements, uranium, and oil, sweet, sweet oil. And much of it is currently untapped due to the fact that, well, I just said this, 80% of the country is covered by ice. But due to global warming, which Trump has previously said is nothing more than a Chinese conspiracy, that ice sheet is melting rapidly. This summer, NASA scientists observed two of the largest melts in the history of Greenland. And that erosion of the ice sheet is expected to make the mining of the country's natural resources much more doable. So the second why Greenland reason is geopolitical. The United States already has a foothold in the country, Thule Air Base, and as the Wall Street Journal, which broke the Greenland purchase story initially, noted, quote, located 750 miles north of the Arctic Circle. It includes a radar station that is part of a US ballistic missile early warning system. The base is also used by the US Air Force Space Command and the North American Aerospace Defense Command, end quote. Okay, the third reason, Trump, you, you may have observed this, is a man very interested in his legacy in office. Buying Greenland would be a major bullet point on his presidential resume. I mean, if Andrew Johnson got Alaska, why can't Donald Trump have Greenland? Question number two, is Greenland actually for sale? That seems like a no. Quote, Greenland is rich in valuable resources such as minerals, the purest water and ice, fish stocks, seafood, renewable energy, and is a new frontier for adventure tourism, tweeted the country's government soon after word of the Greenland purchase broke, adding, quote, we're open for business, not for sale, end quote. Added the Danish prime minister, quote, Greenland is not for sale. Greenland is not Danish. Greenland belongs to Greenland. I strongly hope that this is not meant seriously, end quote. Now, this seems like a good moment to mention via sidebar that again, Denmark does technically own Greenland, although the country does have its own autonomous government. So the country was granted home rule by the Danes in 1979, and in 2008, Greenlanders, Greenlandians, voted via referendum for even more autonomy from Denmark. End of sidebar. Okay, question number three. Is this crazy? Actually, it isn't. Look, I'm as surprised as you. The US has actually pursued the purchase of Greenland before, according to a Danish historian with the most Danish name ever, Tage Karsted. In 1946, US Secretary of State James Burns, who was serving under President Harry Truman, broached the idea with the Danish foreign minister at a UN meeting in New York. Nothing ever came of it. Almost 100 years before that, Secretary of State William Seward, fresh off the US's purchase of Alaska, apparently looked into buying Greenland from the Danes. Also, it didn't happen. Question number four, does the US buy a lot of other countries? Uh, no. One of the last times the US bought land from a foreign country was in 1867 when the aforementioned Seward orchestrated the purchase of Alaska from the Russians for a cool $7.2 million. The US also purchased the Philippine Islands from Spain in 1898 for $20 million and the Virgin Islands from 
Denmark in 1917 for $25 million. Now, of all these, the most famous land acquisition by the United States came earlier, 1803 to be exact, when we agreed to the Louisiana Purchase with France. The U.S. paid $15 million at the time for land that now makes up almost one quarter of America's current territory. But it's not a common thing, or at least it hasn't been a common thing in about 100 years. Okay, sidebar. I know you've been waiting for this. How does that saying go about Greenland and Iceland? It goes like this. Greenland huh, is actually icy, and Iceland, wait for it, is actually green. And that's actually generally true. The temperature in Greenland is rarely above freezing. Iceland, eh, not so much. So why the names? Blame the Vikings. They did it. Sidebar end. So is Donald Trump going to buy Greenland? Probably not mostly because it's not for sale. But the fact that he's thinking about it is totally in keeping with his reputation as the most out of the box thinker and person ever to hold the presidency. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.